So I will, I will speak in English to introduce Sheng Xin. Actually, Sheng does not need much introduction. Uh, for, for those of you who have been attending uh, some of the previous lectures over the years, the work of Sheng has been kind of uh, central in many, uh, many lecture series. Uh, I, can, I remember I spoke about Feshbar resonances, and I was quoting Cheng many times, uh, both for his finding and for his reviews, uh, which were very useful. I mean, we spoke about strongly interacting Fermi gases. Again, we quoted Cheng. Ephim of physics last year, uh, the work of Cheng was seminal. Uh, and 2D Bose gases, uh, which was also subject of one year, Cosolid uh, Taoulis transition. Scale invariance, universality, and again, Shen's work was essential for that. So it's uh, really a great pleasure to have Cheng among us uh, today. Uh, actually, spending a, a few days here. Uh, just a word about uh, his uh, trajectory in physics. Uh, Cheng made his PhD with uh, Steve Chu in Stanford from between '95 and 2001, I think. Uh, then you stayed two more years in Stanford as a postdoc, and then you came to Europe. Uh, as a research scientist in Innsbruck with Rudy Grimm, who, by the way, will be giving the seminar next week. Uh, and then, in uh, 2005, you started in Chicago, and you have been in Chicago for 20 years now, essentially. <laughs> 19, maybe. And uh, just to finish this very short presentation, I would like to say that Cheng has received many prizes. I'm not going to list all of them, but the one I, I would like to quote is... Uh, uh, UPAP uh, Young Scientist Prize, uh, the Rabi Prize of the American Physical Society. Uh, he's a Humboldt Fellow, uh, and he got the Bose-Einstein Condensation Prize in uh, 2017, I think. So, Cheng, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for, for coming. Thank you, John, for giving, uh, giving me this opportunity to, talk, to come here and uh, to talk to you. And indeed, I have, have been here uh, multiple times. I know a lot of very great to see many familiar faces and also young students. And uh, happy to hear, to be here. I enjoyed the, the past couple of days very, very much. Okay. And uh, uh, also this opportunity to talk to uh, Cynthia two lectures can two days ago to talk to the students about some ideas and also today mostly to kind of report our kind of recent result trying to understand kind of reactions of uh, this atom molecule at very very low temperature all right so um, I understand this is a, a crowd with a, I can see a mixture of student experts everybody okay and uh, so I try to just uh, get on to the uh, essential ideas. Of course, there will be also be some formulas or some data and so on. Uh, feel free, to, uh, I'll be happy to talk to you. Okay, I'll still be here for a few more days and uh, have uh, more discussion. And uh, certainly, this is research, so I'm not sure where uh, this uh, we're still exploring. Okay, so hopefully this uh, uh, also get ideas from you how to how we should, we should proceed. Okay, so what you see in the first slide, this is a Chicago downtown. Okay, now the weather is getting better, so if you have any opportunity to, to, to visit Chicago, summer is the best time. But uh, this, uh, uh, and, uh, this is the Michigan Lake right next to the big city. Okay, and uh, yeah, so we are maybe about 15 minute driving distance okay, from, from this, uh, uh, from downtown. Okay, I'm going to start with, uh, for the general public, okay. So since I've been, as like John mentioned, I've been working in, in this, uh, this uh, at UMA Chicago for 10 years, the most common question I have from student family members is, so what exactly are you doing? What, what, what do you do? Okay. Quite frankly, I don't think any of them really want the answer. They're just curious, okay? But they are not really trying to explain what exactly I'm doing, then I think they are, they are losing interest. Okay. So, Typically, say, you know, this, uh, you can go down to this, uh, try to see what is the general uh, concept, what we are doing. Okay? So you can try to put this into this, uh, say, Google, okay, the image. Okay? And then that, uh, try to see this, uh, what, what is the general concept, what scientists are doing. Okay? The first thing, you have to wear a white coat. <laughs> All right, okay, except for the last guy, okay. Fortunately, we just have the Einstein at the corner. Otherwise, the general idea, 
people have an yeah, idea because scientists are doing something like the chemistry type of experiment. Okay. And that's exactly what I tried to avoid when I was a student. I was not good at in chemistry. I think chemistry is way too complicated. Look at this textbook. In the past couple of months, I started to, uh, because of research, try to go into this uh, quantum chemistry. I borrowed this textbook. Okay, I put it on, on, my, on my desk for a couple of months. I don't think I really kind of get much out of it. All right, so typical, uh, typical people talk about chemistry going from some kind of a uh, molecule in some configuration, going to another, uh, another state, go to a so-called this uh, uh, reaction, uh, this uh, coordinate landscape, how to go from such kind of molecule to a different form, a different form, and so on, eventually reach a kind of final product. Okay. People want to understand how a, a circum uh, you can control the reaction, how the certain molecule be converted into something that's more useful. Okay. And uh, certainly this is uh, for complicated molecules. I think people, you might know people trying to develop say AI or just uh, say it's for something that complicated protein folding and so on, making a lot of progress. But overall, it's hard, okay? It's a difficult problem, okay? How to control and uh, control the speed, control the reaction product, okay? And uh, this is, uh, so this is uh, certainly a, a field with a lot of challenges, okay? But as a, as a scientist, we try to sometimes want to try to come, come down to the basics. What exactly, uh, what is the fundamental principles that really drive a reactance into a product? Okay. What's the most uh, important the essence of such kind of interaction? Okay. We can just consider the simplest kind of reaction going from, say, simple atoms, can, can say, atoms can combine into the molecules. A conventional picture is that you prepare your, say, uh, your reactant, say, in the, into a test tube, okay? And then you can try to wait and see when do we see the product, and then you'll see sometimes you need to heat it up, right? If you remember the general chemistry experiment, uh, one strategy is to try to heat up the, uh, the reactants. And that provides some kind of sufficient energy to go over the so-called uh, activation energy, so this higher probability the system can be converted into particular product. It may not be the product you want, you want, but at least something will happen. And doing this process, we think about this, uh, uh, what we call the reactions, about how the molecule, atom molecule then collide. When you go to higher temperature, there's a higher probability to collide, and uh, the higher chance, um, higher collision rate, and then every collision, there's a, maybe there's a small probability. Okay? Maybe every 100 collisions, then one molecule can be created. In this picture, if you go to very, very low temperature, okay, it will be impossible for you to go over the barrier okay, because uh, now there's a insufficient energy for people to, uh, for the reactant to go over the active, to go over this uh, barrier. Okay. Say if, it, uh, if I very, very low temperature, it wouldn't go. Okay. So, and uh, such kind of law is also called uh, um, uh, uh, Arrhenius okay, law. That is uh, the reaction rate Okay, it would depend on the temperature. The, if you go to extremely low temperature, it'll be very difficult to climb over the hill. Okay, then the reaction rate will be low. Okay. So, and this, of course, is a very simple example. In, the, in true molecules, there are many, many different energy scales. Okay. Even for the simplest diatomic molecules, okay, there are all kinds of energy that are associated with it. And this is a nice uh, kind of a cartoon drawn by Jun Yi from Van Gila's group. They try to show that going from uh, the room temperature, even higher than room temperature, all kind of a, uh, vibrational motion, vibrational motion, rotational motion, at all different scales, you see all kinds of these uh, complications. Okay. So this different scale will kind of pose different kind of uh, these uh, um, challenges. Okay. And then if you re wish to prepare the molecule in the desired this uh, vibrational state, rotational state, okay, it, finally the internal state, okay, so a general goal is that if, since it covers so many order magnitude, the colder you can get, in principle, okay, then you can have a, this, uh, you have a better control. So the, the couple years ago, the best limit, the lower temperature people can reach, can down, get down to 200 nano Kelvin, 200 times 10 to the minus 9 uh, Kelvin. And then the molecules start to enter the quantum region, and hopefully you can really control molecule at a single quantum state level. 
Okay, so that is a kind of process going from classical uh, chemistry that involves many, many degrees of freedom into the, this uh, quantum regime. Okay. So in this talk, I would like to this, uh, share with you, we can push one, one step further down to kind of less than 10 nanokelvin, and uh, this molecule, they can essentially all prepare in a desired quantum state. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to mention this is a very active field. Okay, certainly there are a lot of uh, this, including people here, a lot of this uh, uh, effort in the past decades. Okay, trying to go to lower temperature. Okay, and then go to go to also go to higher this. Uh, you, sorry, I, I drew this arrow. Uh, you can see here horizontal direction. This is the temperature zero means one kelvin, minus three means mini kelvin, micro kelvin, nano kelvin. So lower lower temperature, then move to the left then the system can, can be better, uh, better controlled in, the, in a particular quantum state. In the vertical direction, this is a density of some funny unit. Okay? This means 1,000 atoms, uh, 1,000 molecules per cubic centimeter, medium, billion, trillion okay, molecules within one cent, uh, cubic centimeter. So when you go to lower temperature and higher density, okay, then people expect okay, this uh, system be more quantum mechanical-like, Okay, you know, it, uh, can discover some new kind of uh, this uh, new form of chemistry. Okay, all right. Can, I'm not going to skip all the detail. But different technology been developed. How to go to uh, go to mini Kelvin, micro Kelvin, nano Kelvin. But ultimate goal is trying to go to this upper left corner. Okay, and if you could see very clearly, it says quantum degeneracy. That is a situation where you can prepare all molecules into a particular kind of desired quantum state. And here is a partial list of a lot of kind of a research group from all the universities in all over the world. Okay, and uh, they are work on different kind of molecules. There's so many different kind of molecules. Some are very simple, like diatomic molecules. Okay, that's what we're working on the cesium two and so on. And some are more complicated molecules, including this uh, multi um, uh, multi atomic molecules. Okay, and then for some of these, we have a uh, pretty good success. Uh, we can get them down to the quantum degeneracy, meaning all the molecules prepare the same uh, well, a single quantum state, a label yellow. So if that is the science goal, then we expect to see something. Uh, when we reach a goal, we expect to see something new. Okay? And that's the topic of uh, my talk. Okay? Already a couple of years ago, the first example people identify is uh, so-called this, uh, the transition between the Cooper pairing of fermionic atoms into the molecules, okay? And uh, so such kind, of, uh, such kind of transition from Cooper pairs that people discuss okay, in the superconductor, there's a mechanism you can pair electrons, okay? And we found that that kind of pairing also happened in fermionic atoms, and then it can be converted into the molecules. So the molecules and the Cooper pairs essentially that pretty much the same thing, okay? As far as this, uh, atomic quantum gas is concerned, and that's considered one of the major breakthroughs uh, years ago. And more recently, there's a, a lot of progress. In, instead of trying to get this uh, realized Cooper pairing and, and so on, there are other ideas. Okay? For instance, that in this, uh, just a couple of years ago, okay, uh, this, uh, this uh, Jung Yi's group at Jila, they realized they can get this molecule to form a Fermi gas. Okay. Conventionally, think about Fermi gas in terms of electrons, okay, but electrons are fermions, or neutron star, or neutrons are also fermion, they can form a Fermi gas. But now, nowadays, not only atom can form a Fermi gas, molecule can also form a Fermi gas. As long as you start with a fermionic molecule, you get a fermion, uh, this uh, Fermi gas. If you get a bosonic molecule, then you get, a, uh, you, uh, you get something called a Bose condensate. Okay. So that's one thing that is a very, uh, when you go to extremely low temperature, when quantum mechanics start to play a role, then there's uh, two major categories. When the particles are fermionic, okay, then behave more like electrons. Particles more bosonic, they behave more like, say, photons. Okay, and uh, this, uh, they have a different kind of, out at low temperature, you can get a Fermi, Fermi gas or both condensates, depending on whether the molecules are bosonic or fermionic. And such kind of distinction is not really clear at the high temperature. The room temperature, you don't really see much whether the molecule are bosonic or fermionic. But then, at extremely low temperature, that plays a very important role. Okay? So this is a comparison between the Jones group, okay, the, the real uh, degenerate Fermi gas of uh, KRV molecules. And what they did is that they start with the uh, atoms. Okay? 
and then pair atom into molecules. And that is uh, the kind of a chemical reaction we are trying to talk about. In this case, both uh, species, uh, in this case, Rb is a rubidium atom, K is a potassium atom. And this atom going to low temperature, they were able to pair them into the molecule. They call it KRB molecules. And then the temperature is below the Fermi temperature, so it's still very, very cold, kind of hundreds of nano, uh, 100, 200 nano Kelvin, and it forms a degenerate Fermi gas. And in our work, uh, this, uh, uh, today I'd like to mention about this, uh, our cesium atom. Okay, also for this, uh, in this case, it'll be boson. And pair two bosons into a molecule. So once you have one boson, another boson, put them together will also be, uh, also be bosonic. Okay, so this, uh, the molecule we create, CGM, uh, CGM2, okay, we can also form a condensate. And that's what we're talking about, how we create these molecules okay, in, the, this, uh, uh, in a single quantum state and how do we see the reactions. So let me review a little bit about this. Uh, um, Nowadays, a lot of people are trying to go along, uh, follow this, uh, uh, the, the GILA's experiment. And then the basic idea is that it's first trying to figure out what are the energy structures okay, for atom in the ground state and the atom in the, in the excited state, and try to identify the proper kind of uh, lasers you can apply on the atom to drive the transition from this, uh, um, from this, uh, um, this uh, from atoms, okay, convert the atom into molecules. And typically, that's a two-step process. They first form some kind of weak, uh, very weakly bound fish bound molecules. So first, you pair them, okay, but these molecules are very, very excited. Okay. And then you use uh, this uh, identifier, you see, uh, using two lasers, 123 nanometer and 998 nanometer, in order to convert the molecules into the ground state. The purpose of this is that they, um, a lot of people believe if you bring the molecule to the ground state, it should have a better stability. Then you can form a uh, better, this, uh, uh, the molecule can survive longer. Okay. In our case, while working on cesium atom, we found a different approach. We say if we can already create this, uh, the first step can create this very wicked bound molecules. Okay. We found that some of these molecules are already very stable. So we can directly convert them into a molecular condensate. What we do is that we can say this is the energy structure. You can see all the lines, the black line, red line, blue line, they're all the molecular states below the continuum. Okay. Continuum is zero. That's the energy of free atoms. If we define the energy of free atom as zero, then the bound state supposed to should be below zero. Right? And the these states so are the molecular states. And then this, uh, uh, in this diagram, show, uh, we show that this uh, uh, horizontally, this uh, magnetic field, okay? For instance, around 20 Gauss, the 20 is here, around 20 Gauss, turns out this, uh, there is a molecular state, this particular molecular state, there's some molecular quantum number and so on, it, uh, you don't need to worry about that. But uh, at this 20 Gauss, there is a molecular bound state that kind of crosses the atoms at zero. So such kind of, uh, such kind of energy crossing happens very frequently in physics. That if you, this is called a resonant behavior. You can, have, uh, you can see that in the mechanics, in electromagnetism, and so on. Whenever you can bring the uh, two energy into the same level, and then there's a resonant enhancement, that are just like two sound forks. Okay? When one is resonant at the same frequency, the second one, then there's an energy transfer. Right here is the same thing. When uh, bring the molecular energy into zero, that's atomic energy. There's also resonant kind of energy transfer okay, that uh, convert the atom directly into molecules. So experimentally, uh, the way we did this is that we start with uh, this uh, uh, atomic condensate. They look kind of round and circular because we confine them into a very uniform and uh, this uh, uh, circular potential. Okay. The potential is shown in this kind of blue, and uh, this is for for visualization, I just show you what happened if you cut the trap into two halves. Of course, there's another half that I'm not showing. So this uh, with uh, uh, condensed atoms in this uh, two-dimensional, like a Petri dish, okay? and the very thin in the z-direction, but very round and uh, this uh, circular in the uh, horizontal direction, it's like a pizza, or in French, maybe like a, like a pancake. Okay? So now, this. Uh, 
that's the first step. We quite try to prepare the particles in such kind of uniform, uh, uh, uniform box. And the second step, we try to select a particular molecular state, okay, and bring that molecular state into energy degeneracy with the atoms. Okay. And when you tune the two frequency, just like if you tune the two kind of uh, uh, modes into degeneracy, we start to see the kind of resonant energy, uh, resonant transfer from uh, atom into the molecules. Okay. When molecules are created, okay, and then the last thing we did is how we just blow away the atom. We want to prepare a pure simple molecule. So this is the dynamical process. It probably takes a couple hundred, uh, couple hundred microseconds to induce a, uh, induce a kind of resonance. After the resonance, we only want to kill the molecules, then we can blow the atoms away. Okay. And we do that by uh, using laser, laser with different colors to kind of control atom and molecules independently. At the end, this is how we, this, uh, this image shows the, the, uh, the molecule we prepare in our sample, okay, and this original uh, image of the atoms, okay, and then it looks like there's a hole in the middle, that's because our trap is a uniform, but not perfectly uniform, there's still about a little bit, about nano Kelvin kind of uh, inhomogeneity near the bottom, so we know this is uh, just coming from the way imperfection of our trap. All right, so that is a conversion going from atom molecules, okay? But how this, uh, so this process in principle is already uh, this uh, a, a chemical reaction. But I want to understand whether such kind of reaction is different for thermal gas and for, uh, for this, uh, for quantum gas. For thermal gas, okay, we have a, it's very well understood. I'm not going to say much about all the kind of uh, this, uh, the theory people develop for this uh, thermal, atom thermal molecules. People understand that as a kind of collision process, as I mentioned, okay, when particles collide, then a, uh, depending on how fast they collide, depends on the energy of these particles, okay, then you can, uh, you can derive the kind of a general law, how molecule increases, okay, as a function of density of the atoms, n, and also some coefficient that you can compute classically. Our experiment shows uh, uh, if you go down lower and lower temperature, horizontal axis the temp temperature, normally by the critical temperatures, anything above one is classical, anything below one is quantum. So we're able to scan over the, uh, this entire regime, see the, how the reaction in, in the classical gas and follow some kind of classical law, or here, this, uh, the red line is some kind of classical law with overall kind of uh, this uh, branching ratio, some coefficient that provide, that provide the normalization. So you can see on high temperature, it follow this, uh, the prediction quite well. But going to quantum gas, it looks like it follow very different law, okay? So this is the first indication, just by looking at the rate coefficient, just by how fast the reaction is happening. Now we see this uh, uh, seem to be a following different type of this, uh, 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 different, different, uh, different laws, okay? Right, so how do we really, uh, this, uh, to show that this, uh, Indeed, now this, uh, the molecule uh, thus creates also kind of uh, behave like a quantum gas. So repeat the experiment okay, to uh, see, again, uh, this, uh, the process differently uh, in terms of chemical potential. Again, on right, on, right here on the right hand side for high chemical potential means the system already uh, in the quantum regime. Okay? And left hand side should be in the thermal regime that is high. So you can just think about high temperature on the left side and low temperature on the right side. So we want to this, uh, perform the experiment at a different temperature or the classical regime versus the quantum regime and they compare with the theory. For the classical gas, we know how the, this, uh, the, the y-axis is the dens density, some de uh, dimension is density, it's called phase by density. That's something we can, we can measure from the molecular number and the molecular temperature. Okay. Then we see how the density phase by density depends on the chemical potential and show that indeed for high temperature it follows a classical behavior like a, like a, like a thermal gas behavior. Okay, that's the so-called equational state for the thermal gas. When the system being driven closer and closer to the quantum regime, we start, see a, we start to see a very different behavior. You can see this curve okay, is more like an exponential curve. But somehow when you go above zero, then more or less can switch over to a straight line. Okay, with a much higher slope. Okay. 
And uh, this is a well un understood behavior. People kind of study uh, this uh, um, about this uh, quantum gas. When the when the system really reached the kind of quantum regime, then uh, the dependence between the chemical potential and the density, that's horizontal axis, the vertical axis here, will be linked by a simple constant. Okay, but that constant can determine the uh, scattering between we can determine the interaction between molecule and molecule. That turns out to be 224. All right, so if we skip all the kind of technical de the detail, this is a part that just shows that you can, we can re repeat the experiment from high temperature to low temperature. Indeed, we can see it confirmed with uh, this, uh, the, uh, the expected behavior based on this uh, thermodynamics. Okay, so thermodynamically speaking, we can confirm this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, transition into the molecular BEC. All right, and uh, this is another way to, to plot to show that this uh, indeed we can see the, this, uh, the molecule into the quantum regime. So this, um, so this experiment is, is an earlier experiment to confirm okay, the molecules are condensed. All right, so, but that's not how our goal, our ultimate goal, trying to see what do we want to see. We want to see if we really go to the true quantum mechanical regime what would be the new guiding principle of chemistry? Will chemistry be different? Okay. This collision or kind of this uh, picture or this, uh, it may be replaced by something more interesting. Okay. So that starts with uh, some prediction in the, this, uh, in the literature. Okay. So right here, the prediction is that if you can go to lower, lower temperature, okay, for atoms on the right hand side, uh, atoms can, can form a condensate. Molecule on the left hand side can also form a uh, can form a, form a condensate, okay. And then this uh, solid line indicates the kind of transition. So classical system and the quantum system, uh, there's a clear boundary between the two. This uh, the between between them, and this is typically called a critical temperature. When the temperature below critical temperature, the system uh, atom condense. But for molecule, you need to go to much lower temperature, and this is the two two reasons. First, when you, whenever you try to induce a pairing, then the, uh, the mass of the particle increases. Right? So you pair two particles into one molecule, the mass is twice as large. Second, okay, this, uh, uh, the number of a molecule will then be an uh, atom number divided by two. So for more massy particle and a fewer number of particles, okay, both uh, factor attribute to a lower critical temperature. So this shows a kind of, a, even when everything is in an almost ideal system, okay, the critical temperature of a molecule is a factor of something like two root two or something like that, uh, almost a factor of four, lower than the, this uh, atom. So when you get the, this, you need to go to much lower temperature in order to get molecule to condense. Okay, that's the first information. Second, if you go to then why is a conventional chemistry? The conventional chemistry would be the transition between kind of a normal atoms when temperature very very high. So you go to a room temperature and so on. When temperature very high, you have a kind of a normal kind of a thermal gas. Like all we are, all we are breathing the, this other uh, this uh, normal gas, and then atom can all be converted into molecule in the normal gas regime, and that is you can say that's a convert uh, conventional chemistry that happened okay, across this uh, dashed line, okay, from normal atom to normal molecules, okay, and you can call this is the kind of chemistry that we talk about is mostly driven by the kind of thermal. Uh, thermal energy because the higher temperature uh, lead to a higher collision rate and then the reaction in principle can be faster. But when we go down to very, very low temperature, that's the considered limit, go down to zero temperature. Okay, so temperature is no longer important, but the reaction can still happen. That's how we can, this, uh, can see such kind of this uh, conversion from atom to molecule. But this time no longer driven by temperature, but with, in principle there should be a transition from atomic BEC to molecular BEC. Okay? And then in the literature, in this paper, they may consider this is a, a chemistry that is more quantum me mechanical in nature. It can lead to the all kind of, a, kind of a, this uh, uh, collective quantum mechanical effect. So it's been uh, this uh, called the so-called super chemistry. All that means is that it's a quantum mechanical effect, it's a collective. You can see atomic BEC, the molecular BEC in a coherent and a quantum mechanical evolution between the two states. 
All right. But this early paper has missed uh, uh, several important, uh, some important features based on our kind of uh, a, a better model. Okay, and uh, we I show that on the right hand side you saw this uh, stable atomic BEC. Left hand side can be stable molecular BEC as long as you have a proper kind of interaction to stabilize. Okay, this uh, the the samples. But in the middle, okay, because the coupling between N and the molecules, there's a uh, near the resonance. The system will be unstable. Okay, for the experts, if you can look uh, look at this Hamiltonian, you have energy of molecule, energy of the, uh, uh, this uh, detuning the molecule, energy of the atom, energy of the molecule, and this uh, coupling between atom molecules. Okay, it can uh, write down what is the kind of a ground state energy, and there is a certain uh, certain regime. The system is uh, it will be will be unstable. Okay, so what this means is that for at least for our system. Such kind of transition from atom to molecule likely happen in this in this uh, in the regime system is not, uh, is not stable. Okay, so our experimental approach has been the following: prepare the BEC on one side when it's stable, and then in order to convert molecule, we need to put ourselves into this unstable regime. Okay, and need to look at how they react. Okay, but because the system doesn't really is not truly stable in this regime after some interaction time, then we need to bring the system away from the resonance okay, in, and see how many molecules we can create. All right, okay. But if we just leave out those, uh, the, uh, those uh, complications about the instability and uh, maybe lead to some inelastic process and so on, that's just for the fun of it. Let's try to see, in principle, if we forget about the loss, okay, what do we expect? In the, uh, in the quantum regime, the molecule reaction can behave differently from the atoms. All right. Okay, so now let's do some exercise. Um, this, uh, uh, while this, uh, write down the, this, uh, uh, the, the equation for the, this uh, chemical reaction in the, this uh, quantum regime. Here, I'm making an assumption all the atoms, they occupy one state. This atomic state, this molecular state. Okay. Say you might have 1,000 atoms, then you'll be 1,000 atoms in the same state. You have 500 molecules, there'll be 500 molecules in the other state. Now, because there's a resonance that experimentally we can induce between the two states, we can see how the population will uh, convert and go from one to the other one. But we know this, uh, we're talking about a simple reaction, so whenever you create one molecule, you must lose two atoms. Okay? This energy, or you can say this uh, uh, mass conservation, Okay, that is uh, just, uh, you, you won't be able to avoid that even in quantum mechanics. So what this means is that this is understanding what I'm writing here. This is more like just uh, describing what uh, this uh, the uh, reaction process. You lose two atoms and create molecules. Or you lose one molecule and create two atoms. Okay. And uh, this, uh, this is, uh, I guess, uh, kind of zero order, okay, kind of uh, this uh, kind of uh, how we could um, Think about the resonant coupling between atom and molecule in the in the in the many body system. If you write down su uh, such a Hamiltonian, then you can try to kind of solve the equation and see why it would be the evolution of the uh, of the molecule and the uh, and the atoms. And here, uh, let me just mention this is a creation of molecules. When you see the dagger here, okay, and then you can write down the equation and see how the more uh, how the molecule will increase with time. Okay. If you start with atom, you want to see more molecules. So you want to have uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, equation. Of, uh, you want to write down the equation and see what is the best way to describe the, this, uh, the evolution or the uh, formation of molecules. Okay. With such kind of a picture, it's very different from the, uh, from the classical chemistry that we learn in, kind of, uh, in, in general chemistry class. Okay. We are talking about a process that is uh, coherently Couple that coherent that coherent couples atom from molecules and all the atoms as share the same wave function, coupled to molecule where all the molecules also assumed to be occupied in the same wave function. This is approximation just for the uh, for simplicity. That's assuming there's only atomic BC molecular BC. There's nothing else. Okay, and there's a reaction. You can create a molecule from atoms, or you can create this uh, atom from molecules. That's a dissociation process and the. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the synthesis of molecule and the decomposition of molecules. 
Okay. And finally, the energy of atom molecule can be controlled. That's something experimentally you can use the magnetic field to control them. Okay. All right, so if you know in uh, this, uh, this uh, how to solve the equation, we can just try to solve it and see how the system will behave uh, from the, this, uh, uh, will, uh, will behave as, a, uh, as we induce a coupling between the two species. So we try different ways, and it turns out one picture, well, uh, that's, uh, uh, one result that surprised us a little bit, is that you can actually uh, uh, look at this uh, kind of complicated equation, the field equation and so on, and uh, put it into some kind of uh, this uh, simple kind of analog, just what we learn in general mechanics. Okay, then there is a, a kinetic energy, there's a potential energy. Right here, if you look at the, uh, in, uh, the, how fast the molecules are created, Nm is the number of molecules. Okay, and uh, think about that as a velocity. And then there will be associated potential, such that the total energy seem to be, con uh, seem to be a constant. Okay. But this is just analog, so this is uh, certainly not a coordinate, and also this is, is the operator and so on. So it's not, but it just has a similar form. Okay. When you bring a similar form, that can provide you some kind of uh, the general picture. Okay. Then we can, based on this uh, equation, can derive what would be such kind of potential that we call, we call it kind of reaction potential, how this V2 function looks like. Okay, so I'm drawing right here. So what I'm drawing here is I just some kind of, uh, some kind of potential that more or less describes this, uh, this uh, kind of energy of the system. And uh, I made the assumption that both atom molecule, they have zero energy to begin with. They are degenerate, okay? So that's what we can do experimentally. We can tune them into degeneracy. So 100% atom and 100% molecule, they share the same energy. But now if we induce a coupling, now it's possible to kind of derive this potential to show that there is a, some kind of curve, okay? And this potential can have a lower energy. It's just like the particle can slide down the, uh, slide down the potential well that release the marbles into the ball, okay? There seems to be some kind of uh, tendency that will bring the system into some kind of mixture 100% atoms is not the lowest state. 100% molecule also not the lowest state. Okay, then there's uh, some kind of potential it can, this, uh, can, can be described by, uh, by that equation. Okay. okay, so if you really take the kind of classical mechanics analog kind of series, you will say if you release a particle here, that I think we probably all know due to the energy moment, uh, due to the energy uh, potential, energy conservation, the particle, the system will gain some energy, will probably slide down to here and go to the other side, and maybe it'll come back and so on, okay? But quantum mechanics is a bit uh, richer than this. Okay. If you take that uh, approximation, okay, this is that kind of picture, this is so-called a mean field picture, okay? You can forget about the, the terminologies. Essentially, if you start with uh, all atoms to begin with, okay? And then you expect the particle go slide down and go to the other side. And you'll get stuck, that's what I mean feel. Why does it get stuck? This is because the particle, you release them here, eventually come down to the other side, but it's almost getting to the top of the hill. Okay, and the hill is slow, it's zero, so when you get to the, the, uh, the, the other end, okay, the system gets stuck right there. But this is not what happened if you really look at the, the full quantum mechanical behavior. And this is a uh, expected value. This is uh, what you would expect under this molecular number. It turns out it shows something, something like this. This is typically associated with some kind of damp oscillator. You're saying may, there may be dissipation and so on. Okay. But so far, I haven't even introduced any dissipation to the system. But the behavior somehow looks uh, 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 dissipative. Okay. So the true kind of uh, full quantum mechanical calculation shows that the following behavior. If you start, uh, you start with zero molecules, and T equal to zero, and then turn on the reaction, okay? And then see how the system behaves. For the first half a cycle, it follows the mean field pretty well, but then very quickly develop into something really, really kind of messy, okay? There may be some rule, there may, may be some, 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 uh, some interesting physics here, but from this calculation, this exact, uh, exact diagonalization is kind of the do our best to solve the equation. You can see this, uh, it developed all kinds of a superposition entanglement and so on. So it's a huge mess. Okay. 
even though it's a huge bank, you can so try to uh, try to uh, evaluate expectation value, try to see what's the what's the mean kind of uh, this uh, uh, if you repeat it many many times, okay, what do you expect? So it turns out the result is this, this kind of damn oscillation also reported in this earlier paper. Okay, the, it, the quantum calculation shows you some kind of damn oscillation, okay, and it's very very different from your generic picture, or this mean field, your classical picture. Okay, how the system will behave. Okay, and eventually the system seems to be settled down to some kind of a, this uh, some kind of equilibrium. Okay, if you look at expectation value. All right. So now the question is, uh, is if you do the experiment, okay, what do we see? Okay. All right. This is what we see. So at t equal to zero, we start with one hundred percent. This uh, about two times ten to four twenty thousand atoms. Okay. And then we quickly change the magnetic field. We quickly induce the resonance. We want to see with this uh, with our time resolution. We want to see how atom drops, how molecule increases. So if you take my right hand, the atom in the beginning we have twenty thousand atoms and no molecules. Okay. And t equal to zero, we suddenly kind of induce a resonance and try to see how population go from one side to the other side. Okay. And this is what we see. A short time, the atom quickly drops and molecule quickly increases. Molecule number quickly increases. And then for the next few hundred microseconds, we actually have no idea what the system is doing. So it looks maybe there's some variation we, don't, we couldn't quite tell. But afterwards, we start to see some kind of more regular oscillations. Okay. All right. And lastly, if you wait for long enough time, okay, there's an overall decay. I think for longer time scale, say three milliseconds and so on, then we start eventually the system will decay. Now we understood there is some kind of uh, in instability process that happening. Okay. So our focus is more about this, uh, what happened in the first couple of milliseconds. Do we understand the fast decay and also understand this, uh, this oscillation? Uh, this oscillation is uh, something new to us. Okay, first let's look at the decay, initial decay. Okay. So uh, as an experimentalist, we just uh, well it looks like this, look it looks like this is something close to a linear curve. So I'm just going to fit, trying to going to describe the beginning for the first few hundred microseconds, try to use a kind of a, this uh, use a linear curve, okay, to kind of uh, fit the data. Okay, try to see how fast atom number drops and how fast molecule number increases. Turns out they are linked because in principle you lose two atoms, you could create one molecule. All right, so if you look at the initial kind of decay, now this is a result, that is a loss rate, just, just, a, uh, just from the linear slope. Okay, from the linear, linear slope, we can, we can see the loss rate. Okay, and here zero is a resonance. I just offset the uh, coordinates such as her resonance is exactly at zero. Okay. So on one side, you can see the data point drop down quickly down to 0.1. 0.1 means our system at 10 second lifetime. Okay. All right, we're far away at 10 second lifetime. We're getting closer and closer to resonance. Now become, go to go to one, that means the system one second lifetime. 10, to, when you go to 10 to three, the one millisecond lifetime. Okay, so molecule, this atom will quickly drop within one millisecond. Eventually go all the way down to kind of 10 to five, I mean, 10 microsecond time, uh, time time. So it's a huge kind of a reaction uh, change of the reaction rate from very, very slow reaction to very, very fast reaction within kind of a five or six order of magnitude. It's difficult to imagine five, six order of magnitude. Okay, if I look at the data, you can put it here. But let me just show you some raw data, how it looks like. Okay. So we are away from the resonance about kind of uh, this uh, about roughly one Gauss. You can see the particle number remains stable uh, over the oh, uh, one second. Uh, you might lose ten percent and so on. So you can imagine the uh, her lifetime is pretty long. Okay. So this uh, this atom that essentially not not much is happening. Okay. All right. Now I go to hundred millisecond, seventy four millisecond. You try to get closer. Okay. Now, I, this on the right hand side, that's a near resonance. Now, this is a very different scale. Now, this is only zero to three. Okay, there's only a squeeze in a kind of a tiny, this, uh, the first few milliseconds. Okay, this is a 34 milliseconds, 28, 19, and nine. Okay, only nine, sorry, nine minigauss. 
the tiny kind of magnetic field away from the resonance. Immediately, you see kind of this uh, huge change of the time scale. The, the last one you see almost had like uh, quickly drop down to this uh, uh, to some value, and somehow becomes stabilized. Okay, at this uh, show, at this uh, near resonance, it looks like this a uh, step uh, two step process. First, it quickly drop down in the, maybe in the kind of ten microsecond or a few ten microsecond to a value, and then become stable. Okay, it seemed to me, it seemed to us, there's some kind of fast relaxation. The system quickly decays to kind of relax to a new value and then remain in that value over multiple milliseconds. Okay. Because the system remains stable for the next uh, multiple millisecond, we start to think about this process seem to be some kind of relaxation. Like the moment you turn it on, turn on the coupling, the quickly the, the, the system react. But then, uh, after kind of hundreds of microseconds, then the system become kind of stable for the next few milliseconds. Yeah. That is, that's how the data tell us, okay, and uh, we had no idea this will happen like this. Okay. And uh, certainly this can, like, cannot be dis uh, described by single exponential decay, okay, because the system becomes pretty much stable over, over some amount of time. Okay, so let me come back to this. So now you can see this is a large kind of dynamical range from 10 seconds to 10 microsecond kind of, kind of scale. And also when you go away from the resonance enough, you see the two tails are pretty symmetric. Okay, that's described by this green area. Okay, going far away from resonance. Okay, All right. I should mention the resonance is still about eight milliseconds in width. Okay, but you can see such an effect even hundreds of uh, hundreds of mini gauss away. So a mini gauss in width. Okay, that's because we have a sufficient dynamic range, so we can still see the Lorentzian, and the, this is a Lorentzian fit. It looks like this uh, kind of uh, Lorentzian tail. Okay, on both direction. However, when you get really really close to the uh, resonance, we think about hundreds of uh, hundreds of mini gauss and so on. We can see a, a clear deviation. Okay. I'm going to say that this, uh, we consider this is, uh, this is a both enhancement. For a thermal gas, first for a thermal gas, we do not see, at least do not see a, such a clear kind of enhancement. Okay. And the second, the, this, uh, uh, the scaling law is different. Uh, this, uh, the, 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 the magenta curve uh, shows the scaling. Okay. That's more consistent with the three body. Okay. It's uh, beyond the kind of uh, this, uh, what we, uh, three body and they also be kind of uh, being enhanced. Okay, and the one indication is that the, the magenta line shape is shifted to one side, it's no longer symmetric, and that's a feature of three-body process that is not symmetric with respect to the uh, resonant position. Well, okay, this is our current understanding. Now let's move on to the second, second feature. It's, in addition to this fast decay in the beginning, then it seems to be some kind of oscillation that follows. Okay. So repeat the experiment, Okay, in this case, under pretty much a very similar condition, start with the BEC of atoms and so on, but we, we found the parameter that can really control the, this uh, oscillation frequency. Turns out it's just a particle number. Okay, based on the same trap, okay, and uh, now go to different particles in the, this, in the kind of circular box. Okay. Now we start to see there's a different oscillations. Uh, uh, there's some oscillation not super clear. This oscillation has amplitude only a few hundred molecules. Okay, but we see the more particle or higher density seem to be a higher oscillation. Okay, oscillation between these atom and molecules. So we compile all the major we have. We can change the particle number over about theta five or maybe theta eight and so on. Okay, and then this is uh, I'm showing the data without any any theory any theory first. So we we do this. Okay, just uh, by analyze our data, it shows this kind of funny curve. Okay. All right. Then we can say, well, okay. So how about us try to compare this with uh, this uh, with a theory? Let me mention about the theory. The theory is that based on our this uh, two more approximation, atom coupled molecules or atomic BC coupled molecule BC without considering other this uh, uh, other type of molecule or excitation and so on. Okay. And this will be our expectation. Okay. All right, this is for particle in the trap and this, uh, this, uh, uh, how this oscillation 
okay, uh, supposedly should, uh, this uh, should scale with a particle number. So looking at this, we, we well, we don't know what to do. It, it doesn't look like this. It's a, uh, we don't really have a, a very good agreement and so on. Okay, until one day, we really kind of brave enough trying to redo the calculation consider a different model. So we consider this model also partially because we see that near the resonance, okay, there is a clear deviation from the symmetric low resonance profile. And uh, there's also kind of uh, in the literature, people start to consider, in addition to the two-body coupling, you might also need uh, this uh, three-body coupling can also become important. So the three-body coupling term is, uh, can be described as uh, the so-called recombination. So here, per se, a to the third power, that means you start to have uh, three atoms. In the process, you lose three atoms, and then create one molecule and one atom. Okay? So in the, this uh, classical uh, chemistry, you see this process is very, uh, not very different. This is what we have in mind. You say, well, if you have cesium, cesium here, you can cancel it. This should be the same as uh, this, uh, just a uh, two particle convert into some molecules. I say, in, you, know, you can say, well, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, cesium element doing nothing. However, fundamentally, they're very different because this is a three-body process, okay, and this is a two-body process. Okay, so it will be different with little different scaling law. Okay. All right, so, Based on our measurement, this is a kind of a, this, uh, uh, um, our measurement shows, if you forget about the, the fit, you just uh, try to uh, forget about the theory, then try to fit our data, we get the kind of e uh, exponent to be 0.7, okay, and that can be compared with uh, this uh, theory, the 0.6 okay, for the three-body process, and only 0.2 for the two-body process. Okay. All right. So that's assuming really three-body process. Okay. And then for simplicity, that's uh, just consider three-party process, uh, process dominates. So then you can uh, try to revise your kind of equation. Okay, this energy of the molecule, okay, related to the atoms, and this is a three-body coupling. Okay, that lose three atoms and create one atom, one molecule. Okay. Given this, you can sort of try to derive what's the uh, reaction potential. It's a big kind of lengthy calculation. Okay, but then I show the result right here. Okay, so again, we're assuming this, uh, the first term is uh, zero if you tune the system into resonance. So 100% and 100% molecules have the same energy. But when there's uh, different fractions, then you can start to see this, uh, from this potential, uh, this, uh, you can see the trace out kind of a kind of funny curve like this. This again has the same feature. If you release the system, you based on mean field, the system will uh, kind, of, uh, kind of slide down, eventually get stuck on the other side, okay? Because this will be uh, sure, zero velocity and so on, okay? But however, the full quantum mechanical calculation will show the system will behave as you kind of have some kind of damping, eventually settle down to the bottom, okay? In particular, in this case, the bottom happens around this, uh, uh, the um, molecule fraction to be about 0.2%. And accidentally, when you look at our data, okay, if you look at the molecular fraction, okay, taking this, uh, the number of molecules, normally by the total particle that still remain in the system, indeed we see something very close to 20%. Okay, because, so this, uh, if it's not complicated by other things, this may be another evidence that uh, this, uh, the, the minimum, okay, that, uh, that supports the three-body model. By the way, for two-body model, then it will be 33%. Okay, so I'd like to summarize. Okay, so we have been uh, trying to look into these dynamics uh, carefully near pretty narrow uh, resonance, where across which we can see a stable kind of atom on one side, stable molecule on the other side. Okay, right. And then uh, this uh, near the resonance, we're trying to, this, uh, we, we can see there's uh, some interesting scaling law under this, um, um, how, how the coherent oscillation will uh, scale with the particle number, okay? 
And then we're trying to, we're trying to compare these two models. So far, it looks like three body models seem to fit better in terms of the, uh, the scaling with the particle number and also the molecular fraction. And this explains why you know, a lot of kind of uh, more, uh, the BEC experiment, you can never really get beyond 20%, okay, maybe. All right, so what are the other features I'd like to see? In addition, in addition to the coherent oscillation and the enhanced kind of reaction, okay, we like to see other features on this uh, reaction potential that we can, uh, we can study. And also, if you look at this, any of these equations, okay, this uh, resembles the so-called nonlinear wave equation people studied study in uh, quantum uh, nonlinear optics. That's the process people can send in a kind of blue photon into a nonlinear crystal and create two red photons. In our case, molecules like the blue photon because energy twice as large as the atoms. And atoms are the red photons. Okay? And then reverse process it will be called high harmonic generation. Okay? You can convert red photon into blue photons. Okay? And that described by essentially as the same kind of uh, wave function other than dispersion different. All right, but if that is the case, the chemical reaction can be modeled as a nonlinear mixing of uh, this uh, metal wave. Okay, there will be a lot of other phase uh, in interesting consequence. For example, the phase doubling when you kind of pair atom into molecules. Okay, so I just quickly show that this uh, research in progress. We're trying to create a vortex molecules. Okay, and uh, the idea we want to see that this uh, um, we try to see that if we can do the interference. Okay, whether we can see the, this uh, voltage on the atoms, okay, the determine the winding number, and we convert atoms into molecules, okay, whether we can see the winding number is doubled. Okay. But so far, in NASA City, this area is based on atoms. We're still trying to develop a new kind of uh, the, best, the best scheme to really show whether the phase doubling is happening in the molecules. All right, I'll just stop here, and I'll finally I'll just thank my group members. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Okay.